Ladies and gents, welcome back. The provincial governments are not playing nice with the feds right now, and this has largely to do with the federal government overreaching into provincial territories and jurisdictions. Now we have Parliament's Pinocchio, Marco Mendicino, having a hard time with his gun buyback, gun grab scheme going on. We have a report from True North. Mendicino admits liberal gun grab relies on provincial help. He can't do it alone. Public Safety Minister Marco Mendicino has admitted he has no other option if provinces won't enforce the Trudeau liberals gun grab scheme. The minister made the revelation on Tuesday's hearing of the Parliamentary Committee on Public Safety and National Security, which came under three provinces came after three provinces said they don't want their provincial police resources used for Ottawa's confiscation program. And well, <laughs> we had the new premier of Alberta on the news the other day uh, on CTV, and while well, she had this to say. I'm asking about this Alberta Sovereignty Act because uh, it's widely seen as unconstitutional. Do you think you have a mandate now before you've ever gone to a general election to actually start on down that road or are you going to wait? Like how quickly are you going to act on that? We're going to act really quickly on it because I think you saw what happened last week with Justice Minister Tyler Shandro and he demonstrated that we can stand up for our provincial jurisdiction when he said that we were not going to enforce the federal confiscation scheme on firearms because it's not our policing priority. Priority, that our policing priority is gang violence and making sure that we don't have gun smuggling and and provincial jurisdiction is also property and civil rights. Now, my I would just add an extra step that when we take those kinds of actions in defending our constitution, we would put it forward in a motion in the assembly so we can have a full debate on it. But I, I think that it's only fair to the federal government to let them know we're changing our relationship back to the way it was supposed but, to but be. But can you do that without to going to our the jurisdiction people? On everything. Can you go to that? I mean, you've got a I mandate from like 45,000 yes. Albertans. You think you've got a mandate to do the Alberta Sovereignty mm -hmm. Act, which a lot of people will say will jeopardize the Alberta economy because investors might say, man, if you're not going to enforce federal legislation that the courts have said, why would we invest in Alberta right now? Just a little break here. When a reporter says a lot of people or something is widely seen as without actually giving context to why that might be. Uh, that's them inserting their own opinion right there. This is not, <laughs> it's not a lot of people. It's this person who said that. Well, you, I think I think it's been mischaracterized. It, is, it has nothing to do, I, you said in your opening, with separation at all. It, what it has to do is going back and looking at how the Constitution in our country is supposed to work. I know, I know we've always been treated like a subordinate level of government. We've acted like it, but we're going to stop acting like that. We're going to take our place as a senior partner in Confederation. We are almost the second largest economy in the country, and I, I think we deserve some respect for that. I think we can work collaboratively with our federal counterparts, but they cannot keep taking action that prevents us from attracting investment, prevents us from investing in our oil and gas industry, and prevents us from helping our friends and allies. We're going to push very hard to make sure that we get our resources developed, which is constitutional jurisdiction under the provincial government. And then they can take us to court if they want to stop us, but I think we'd, we'd win that battle. That's what I'm looking forward to. Danielle Smith coming out strong on that one. <laughs> in response to a question from Conservative MP Taco Van Pobda, about whether Mendicino has a plan B for provinces that don't participate in the program, the minister acknowledges that there, he has no other options and said he'll still focus on plan A, advancing a fair buyback program that will compens compensate law-abiding gun owners for the assault-style rifles they originally purchased lawfully is consistent with keeping our community safe and we will always be collaborative with our provincial and territorial partners, he said. My door will always be open to working with them in a wide variety of priorities to achieve that goal. Maybe like uh, not, <laughs> not working on that goal at all as uh, some of the provinces are pushing forward on. Minister did not address the strong opposition already voiced from three of his provincial partners. Last week, the government uh, governments of Alberta and Saskatchewan announced that Mendicino wrote to them asking for their provincial RCMP to act as confiscation agents, which they refused. And well, here's here's uh, Alberta telling the RCMP to ignore Trudeau's gun ban. Solicitor General Tyler Shandro, which was alluded to by Daniel Smith there, 
Uh, we will not tolerate taking officers off the street in order to confiscate the property of law-abiding firearms owners. And here he is saying that. Now, it's important to remember that Alberta taxpayers pay over $750 million per year for the RCMP, and we will not tolerate taking officers off the streets in order to confiscate the property of law-abiding firearms owners. To take action, I have used the authorities that we have as a province. Under the Provincial Police Service Agreement, this is the agreement that we have with Canada to contract our, our provincial policing. And I've used these authorities to write to the commanding officer of the RCMP in Alberta to formally identify the confiscation program as an activity that is not an, quote, objective, priority, or goal of the province or the Provincial Police Service, end quote. And that the use of RCMP resources would be contrary to the effective and efficient delivery of police services. Consequently, the RCMP should refuse to participate. Now, despite taking this step, the federal government may still direct the RCMP to serve as confiscation agents. To prevent this from happening, Alberta will formally dispute any attempt to do so by invoking Article 23 of that agreement, the Provincial Police Service Agreement, our government understands the dangers that come with the criminal misuse of firearms, and we've always been in favor of sensible per, uh, policies to mitigate those risks. As today's announcement bears out, however, we will never support misguided policies, fear-mongering, or the seizure of private property. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> So uh, in May 2020, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced that he was banning more than 1,500 models of firearms, including AR-15s. The par parliamentary budget officer said the program would cost $750 million. Now, these 1,500 different models are arbitrarily prohibited. They're banning these uh, models based on the way they look. So this idea of assault-style uh, firearms. It, it mainly has to do with uh, what the way they look. If if they have a pistol grip on them instead of a classic uh, rifle grip on them. Now you have to understand that these uh, changes to modeling on on firearms is largely to do with ergonomics. It, it's it's all designed to not hurt the user of the firearm and it may make them look scary but that's the purpose of it it would be just as sensible as banning your uh carpentry drill or uh tools like that because they they look scary because of ergonomic designs those costs would balloon to one billion dollars once administrative fees are taken into account yet the taxpayers are recently or have re already been billed more than three million to run the program and not a single gun has been purchased by the canadian taxpayer federation revealed thursday alberta minister of justice tyler tyler shrandro last week told he would obstruct the gun grab by any means necessary and that's what he was talking about there two days later saskatchewan firearm chief firearms officer bob freberg Revealed to the province, uh, revealed the province w wrote to the RCMP saying no provincially funded resources of any type, including the RCMP, will be used for Mendicino's buybacks. Following these announcements, uh, Manto Manitoba Justice Minister Kevin Kelvin Goatson said he told Mendicino the program cannot erode finite police resources which are needed to investigate violent crime. We will be bringing these concerns along with the shared concerns of Saskatchewan and Alberta directly to the federal government next month in meetings of ministers of justice and ministers of public safety, Gortson said in a statement on Facebook. Mendicino has already accused Alberta government of acting in a reckless manner for opposing his costly program. Conservative MPs on Tuesday com committee, Tuesday's committee grilled the minister over Trudeau's government's plan to target law-abiding gun owners with the bill C-21, which includes the gun, gun buyback program, as well as other firearm control measures. Raquel 
Dancho asked Mendicino why the government intended to redirect police resources to the confiscation regime while resources were already stretched. MP Dane Lloyd, <laughs> total champion of the channel here, uh, always saying good things in Parliament. Uh, Dane Lloyd wondered why the government was not implementing a program to buy back illegal firearms used by criminals. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't get much better than that. Uh, throwing the heat back at the federal government and saying, no, absolutely not. This, we are not going to go along with uh, this program that is confiscating property that was legally uh, uh, obtained by law-abiding citizens uh, just because they arbitrarily want to ban particular things with no no good reason except uh, they look scary and this is uh, this is of course where we are today with this situation leave a comment in the comment section down below uh, let me know what you think do you live in one of these provinces do you live in outside of one of these provinces and you're worried about this uh, buyback program and possibly having someone knocking on your door uh, looking to take your property from you let me know in the comments down below if you're not yet subscribed to the channel please do so now consider subscribing hit that notification bell it lets you know when i go live i'll be going live tonight i have a special guest and we'll let you know about that soon enough but we're gonna uh be doing that so hit that notification bell and we'll see you in the next one keep on trucking